Hi, I'm the Adobe Guy, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Flash video player. And when I say Flash, I mean Adobe Flash rather than Flashy, as in a bit, bit Flash. Um, although, having said that, it is going to be a bit Flash as well. Now, the traditional video players you're used to seeing on websites probably look something like this, so quite flat. And here's just one I've embedded the HTML from YouTube. Um, and unfortunately, for most people, this is as far as it gets. But we're getting more and more used to seeing videos online. And customers are asking for more now. So what can we do? Well, using Flash, we can actually spice things up a bit so we can put some movement into those videos as well. Now what I'm going to do is here I'm going to come on to uh, Flash and I'm going to open up a new Action Script 3. Okay, so here we are, new Flash file. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to import to the stage. So file import, import to stage. And I just typed in TV PNG and I found a nice little picture. So there we go. And this has been brought into the stage. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to add in some keyframes. But just before I do that, I'm just going to reposition it and resize it. So I'm going to make it 400. And you'll notice because I've got the anchor click together there, it keeps it in proportion. And I'm just going to center it on the screen. So I'll center it and put it in the middle. And that's just to make things easier for, for a bit later on. Right, now what I'm going to do is I right click here and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Now, because I've inserted a keyframe, it's a full one, so it's exactly the same as the previous keyframe. So if I go backwards and forwards, it looks exactly the same. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go across to frame 90, and this time I right-click and I insert just a frame. And what it does now is it fills all the spaces between the last keyframe and this one with exactly the same thing. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to go back to frame 1, and I'm going to clear this. So I'll right click on it and clear frame. So frame one is empty and then from frame two I've got that there running across to frame 90. Okay, what I'm now going to do is I click on this, I right click on it and I'm going to convert to a symbol. So here we go and I'm not going to call it symbol one, I'm going to call it uh, TV and I'm going to make this a movie symbol, movie clip and click OK. OK, now the next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to give it an instance name. And I'm just going to call it TV. Okay. Having done that, I now come back down to the timeline, right click in it, and I say create motion tween. And then I go to frame one. And now comes this clever stuff. I'm going to go across to my 3D tool here. So 3D rotation tool, and I get this funny new icon up on the screen and you'll see how you can actually move this thing in 3D now and all I want to do is I want to position it that way around and then I take the, the vector selection tool and just move it to the left hand side. Now I take my cursor, my playhead, move it right across to frame 90 and I'm saying well actually on frame 90 I don't want it there, I want it on the other side. Spin it around to face the other way. Back to my vector tool and position it across. Yep. And now what you'll see if I move the playhead, you'll see the TV screen just moving from side to side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a video inside this TV just to make it play nicely. So I double click here and it opens up an instance of that symbol. And you'll see here now I'm editing TV symbol rather than scene one again and my timeline has gone back to just one frame. Now that I'm in that symbol I can go across here and I can go to my building blocks and say I want to put a component in and it's a video component that I want to put in and it's FLV playback and I'm just going to use 2.5 it doesn't matter if you use the other one. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to reposition this and resize it. So I'm lining it up, use the free transform tool and you'll notice I'm taking it out of proportion. That doesn't matter because I haven't got a video in there yet anyway. And equally, um, because the, the TV is going to be twisting and turning, um, it's going to be going out of proportion anyway, so it'll still look good. With that still selected, I now come across here 
and I change my settings. So autoplay, yep, I want that. Um, maintaining aspect ratio, no, I don't want to maintain the aspect ratio. I want it to be an exact fit to what I've just told it to be. Um, the skin that's coming over, well, I'll just check the skins. There's loads you can have there. Now, the other thing I want to do is auto hide. So I want to make sure that skin disappears when I'm not hovered over it. And the last thing I need to do is I need to actually pick a video. Now it will only support FLVs and F4Vs at the moment. So I'm just going to go in here and this one I prepared earlier, Wildlife F4V. Now you'll notice I've unticked match source dimensions. Now the reason for that is if I say match source dimensions and bring it in, and I'll just show you what happens, it actually picks up the metadata and it resizes my screen there which is not what I want. So I'm going to go down here, pick it again. There it is, an untick match source dimensions and click OK this time. And you'll notice my screen stays the same size. OK. Now I've got a hard edge around the edge of my video. If I right click on it and say arrange center back, you'll see how now that feathering that I put in in Photoshop is really taking effect and it's given the impression of actually having a, uh, a shadow around the edge of the picture. I'm just going to go back to scene one. Okay. And I'm going to test this movie now. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to actually save it and give it a name. Now when I go up to File, Publish Settings, I can check here, okay, it's going to make a flash and an HTML file, and they're being saved in the same place as I saved TV, and they're all being called the same thing. Okay, so those are the two that I want to start with. Publish, away it goes, and okay. Now let's just have a quick look at how that works. I'm going to show you this control test movie and then test, but you'll notice the shortcut as well, control enter. This is one that you're going to be doing again and again, so it's probably worth remembering that shortcut. There we go, test, and that's what it looks like. Now you notice the first problem straight away. Okay. Firstly, it's not stopping when it gets to any point, and secondly, it's restarting the, the video and of course the audio as well, every time it goes back to frame two. Um, because what we need to do is we need to put some, some kind of stops in on this. Now the way we put the stops in is we go to, we just make a new layer. Now here I'm just gonna rename these layers. So I'm gonna name the first layer TV because that's actually got the TV on it. I'm gonna name the, name the new layer um, stops, um, just because it tells me that that's where I'm gonna put my stops in. Now on this new layer, I'm just going to put a few new keyframes in. Uh, so I'm putting new keyframes in at frame 1, 2, and 90. Now the reason for that is, on frame 1, I want it to be a stop. So I just write in some simple script, and I right click on there, actions, and all I'm going to do is type in stop, uh, open close parenthesis, and semicolon. And that's it. Okay, you'll see that I've got this little A above the frame now, and that means it's got an action attached to it. And I'll come across here to frame 90, do exactly the same. If I can type properly. Okay, so now I've got two stops there. Let's just quickly test that again and see how it works. So test, movie, test. And it should stop on frame one and do nothing. It's perfect, because I told it to stop. Okay. Right. What I now need to do is give it some instruction to make it start on frame one. So now I'm going to go back to frame two here. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to export this picture as a picture. So I'm going to go File, Publish Settings, and I'm going to turn off my Flash and HTML, and I'm just going to export a PNG image. Okay. I'm going to call it TV PNG and just click Publish. Now it's important I go back to frame one, because frame one's empty, and I'm going to file, import, import to, st there it is there. Okay, so TV PNG, and that's an exact copy of what was on there. Yeah. Okay. Right, now what it should do is it should start there, 
and stop straight away because I've told it to stop. So I need some way of, on this frame, telling it to go to frame 2 from when it will play all the way up to frame 90. Okay, so what I need to do on frame 1 is I need to select this object. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a button. So I right click, and convert to symbol, going to make it a graphics, sorry, a movie symbol. That's correct. And I'm going to call this start. And click OK. And I'm going to give this an instance name as well. Uh, start BTN. Yeah. Doesn't really matter what you call it. OK, so that's selected. Now what I want to do is I want to apply some actions on this button. I come across here to what's called code snippets. I just click on there. Now the snippet that I want is to do with the timeline. So I click on timeline navigation. And what I want it to do is I want it to go to frame and play. So I want to double click there, go to a frame and play. And it comes up with this and by default it sends it to frame 5, which I'm going to change to frame 2. And So go to and play frame 2. So when I click on that symbol, which is the picture, it's going to go to and play from frame 2 onwards. OK. Let's just have a go at doing that. And you'll see it's automatically put in a new layer called Actions with the action on that layer. So let's now test this and see what's going to happen. Nothing. That's now a button. I need to click on it to make it act. Click on it and it plays the movie. Gets to frame 90 and it stops and you notice the movie itself continues playing in the background. I've got the controls on the screen, I can pause them and if I move off the screen you'll see the controls disappear. Okay, I've also got the mute button which is dead handy as well. There we go, that's muted. Right, happy with that. Now let's export this. So file Actually, I'll publish it. So I'll check the publish settings. I want Flash and HTML. Publish it. That's the HTML file. This is the Swift file it's created. This is the skin. So that's the controls, the TV player controls. That's the, the PNG that I created. And that's the actual Flash file itself that we're still working on. So the one we want is this one here. Open it up in Internet Explorer. First thing we've got to do is enable scripts, yeah, because some of the scripts we wrote. Here it is. TV I need to click on. Make sure I mute it. Spins around to the right hand side and it stops there. And yeah, the video continues to play, and you'll see the effect of this shadow around the edge there. It's got a really good effect now, it makes it look very realistic. Let's just go back to flash. Okay. Um, we're pretty much done now. I just want to save this file again. Is I'm going to open up Dreamweaver and I'm going to have a look at this in Dreamweaver. Click on the Swift file to select it first of all. Then I come down here where it says W mode. I want to change that to transparent. Now what that will do is it will make the background, which is all the white around the edge of my TV screen, it'll make that invisible. And the way I can prove this is if I just click on the stage Come down to page properties and change the color of the background. Choose a just a light gray. Okay, save this here again. And let's have a look at it now. Click on it, starts to play. Okay. Well, that's all I've got for you today, and hope you found that interesting. I'm the Adobe Guy, and thanks for listening.